You've seen me. In June, we celebrated Jesus Pride Month. And we have the seven colors of the rainbow, not the six. That's the homosexual thing. And we declare that, you know, they said that June was LBGTQ month. No, all the months belong to God. And uh, what I've done, I've gone from this to this. We're going to hang it up in the church, declaring every day, every month, every time we gather, we gather in the name of the God of the Bible, and we have, we proudly represent Jesus Christ. Give them a, a big round of applause as they give this flag its place. Set it up where, where it will flank old glory. So as you walk in, there's the American flag, there's the flag of the state of North Carolina, and there is our flag that declares at all times we are proud to represent Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. That's right. Fix. That's right. See. Isn't that beautiful? What'd you think about that? Let me hear by your applause. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you know, Jesus' pride, amen, says that we're for the Lord and we're for the Bible and we don't apologize for that. Praise the Lord. And we're not giving an inch. So uh, I wonder, are they going to tone it down and change, you know, with this climate like it is right now? I was listening to Shannon Sharp uh, the other day, and Shannon was talking about the president, and he was calling the president a racist and all of that. And among the things, this big black man, pro football, Hall of Famer, uh, six feet tall, full of muscles. Among the things his brother is talking about. And, and Skip, he's against LGBT rights. And I said, Lord, look at where we've fallen. Where a black man is on TV arguing for uh, so-called rights that the Bible doesn't give to a human being. God made them male and God made them female. God said that a man is supposed to marry a woman. A woman is supposed to marry a man. That's in the Bible. Amen. Then they cite stuff. They say all the things that he, he said about Mexicans. I have the transcripts. I have the transcripts. See, let me tell you, one of the reasons I'm like I am with media is that unlike most people in here, and many of you who are streaming, I've dealt with media. The media is by and large, and it didn't just become that way. I've dealt with media for years. They're by and large dishonest people. They have, they have an agenda. And if your position doesn't agree 
with their agenda. They don't do you right. They won't cover you. Um, I, and I've been misquoted. Uh, I remember uh, with the News and Observer, a lady asked me if I had homosexuals in the choir of our, at our church, and I knew it, if they were singing, would I, and I knew it, would I remove them from the choir? I said, yes. And I said, along with adulterers, fornicators, liars, cheats, thieves. And what she printed was, I asked Bishop Wooden if he would remove homosexuals from the choir, and he said yes. Now, she left all the rest of it out. Left all the rest of it out to make it seem like I'm singling out one sin and one group of people. Amen. Uh, the man, um, his name is Bo, I forget his last name, uh, did an interview with me in here, and uh, they were interviewing me about one thing. And the man asked me, I didn't bring it up, he did. He said, don't you think that if illegals are coming into the country, that building a wall or something like that, having a stronger border protection is a good thing? And my answer to him was, it's a no-brainer. When they showed it on the news, he said, there's one preacher in the city who agrees with Donald Trump. And then he showed me saying, it's a no-brainer. They can be some dishonest people. He never said he brought it up. Now, I do believe that there is a difference between legal immigration and illegal immigration. And I know this, no country on earth can survive if it doesn't protect its borders. And for uh, anyone to argue, especially if you're African American, for anyone to argue that we should have open borders and just let other people come in, if you notice the same people who are for that are also the same people who push and promote abortion and they target us for that. So while they're killing our numbers with abortions, they're bringing in other people to replace us. We're just not spiritual enough to see it. So here, I point these things out. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, the one, of the, one of the biggest um, uh, stories it, out there that says uh, the, the president um, um, insulted all Mexicans. We go back and get his speech. I have the transcripts. He says, uh, uh, I'm not talking about you. He says, they're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems. And they're bringing in those problems with us. They're bringing in drugs. They're bringing in crime. They're bringing in rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards, and they, and they tell us what we're getting. And he says Mexico is not sending us their best. Now, whether you believe a person is or isn't a racist, that's up to you. But form your beliefs on what you hear and what in your investigation and not simply on what some talking head tells you because most of those talking heads aren't pure people. They have an agenda. And if you talk to them, if you meet Don Lemon, if you meet uh, Anderson Cooper, if you sit and talk to these people and you, you, you talk to them about their worldview, it's very different from yours. Amen. These people are not friends of the Christian church at all. And they work hard to shape people's thinking. And my position is, think what you want to think, but think what you want to think. Let your thoughts be guided by the scripture and don't fall into this sea of group think. Amen. We're witnessing the demise of journalism. Do you know it is against, there's no journalistic school that exists that teaches a journalist to go on the news and declare a person a racist or this or that. That violates all rules of journalism. All rules of journalism. What they're supposed to do 
is report the story. Report what is said and let you form your own conclusions based on uh, hearing the stories and weighing the stories. And then in this day and time, being wise enough to dig deeper than what they're telling you to find out exactly what is going on. Because what they're trying to undo, believe it or not, and you have to admit, I've been right every time. I've been a hundred. In terms of prophetic, I'm more prophetic than these folk who call themselves prophets. Because I haven't missed. That's my gifting. I see these things. And I've never missed. I missed one time. I, I didn't think hip hop would make it. I didn't even pray about that. I should have prayed over it. Uh, I, just, I just assumed nobody would fall for a, a, a genre that have you cussing like that. Pants hanging off your rear end. Amen. Walking like you, you know, almost deformed. I said, now that can't last. And then uh, profanity laced lyrics and everybody in it's mad, you know. I've never seen a hip hop artist smiling. And with all that, I just assume that, that that that'll die on its own, but I should have prayed. <laughs> but as people of God, look at me, I, I done jumped into it. I've jumped into it. I will, I'll tell you what I was, listen, as people of God, I'll leave that alone. I want you to pay attention, but pray. Don't allow your opinions to just be Oh, okay, well, so-and-so, they said it. They're on television. They report the news. They must be right. Mm -mm. Many times, uh, these people, they have an agenda. A friend of mine in media told me uh, we were doing this transgender thing, and I said to her, I, will, I am having a man to come to our church, Walt Heyer, who was a male, and uh, his grandmother did him wrong. She raised him and she put female clothes on him. And the man, a, a spirit got on the man, and according to his own book, the name of the book is Trading Places. He began to believe that he was a woman. And, uh, and the man had the full Sex change, everything changed. And the moment everything got changed, that voice in his head that kept saying, you're a woman, you're a woman, you're a woman, you are a woman. As soon as he finished the operation, that voice said, you're a man, you're a man, you're a man. Now, everything is gone. Everything's gone. That's the devil. And he came here. And you saw him. And he's one of the finest men that I know of, and I love him. But when I call the media and ask them to come and interview him, even my friends in media, whose cards I have to this day, would not because their narrative is people like Walt don't exist. So if you present them, they won't cover them. There was a march in D.C. a few days ago. Over 200 or so people who were bound into, in perversion and they got delivered. They had a march, the major networks would not cover. Most of you, the first time you've heard about it is now. Because if it doesn't fit their narrative, they won't cover it. And I have experienced this firsthand. And so I came to this conclusion long before anybody came along and coined phrases like fake news and all that. I knew it was fake long before then because they, they have a point of view. A good journalist, I'm going to say this to you, and I'm going to move on. A good journalist, here's how you know they're good. You have no idea. I'm, I'm not talking about a commentator now, but a journalist. You have no idea where they stand on the subject. That's a good journalist. 
If you know where they stand, they have gone from journalism to commentating. And they're trying to affect your thinking. My position is I am an intelligent man. I've been a grown man ever since I've got grown. <laughs> I've been a black person all my life. I don't need somebody on television to tell me what is racism and what is not. I'm intelligent. I'm intelligent. You can't tell me. You can't tell me. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, have, I have too much sense for that. Uh, do you hear me today? So I, I praise the Lord for his goodness, his kindness, and his tender mercy. And I praise God for all that he's doing. I thank him for the two babies that were saved at the clinic. I thank him for the five souls that were uh, saved and the 132 fed at the men's shelter on yesterday. Amen. In the food bank, 350 people, praise the Lord, fed 350 people. And thank you, I want to thank the Thomases for their donation, seven pallets of water. Thank you so much. Where, Brother Thomas? Uh, thank you, and Sister Thomas, thank you all so much. Where is she? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your, for your kindness.